Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of an early chalcolithic individual from the south of Anatolia. Uh, some would say this is part of the Levant region, I think this is still Anatolian. So this is an Anatolian chalcolithic farmer, let's get into this video. When it comes to his phenotype, this is uh, what he looked like, he's got green color eyes, Greek shaped nose and blonde hair. Uh, we're actually going to see what he scores with my uh, web version of Nashakot 2 that also predicts skin color. But he does have uh, the European light skin mutation in SLC45A2, so uh, probably he's going to score light skin with that tool as well. He does not have any draft variants in MC1R. He has blue eye haplotype 1 and 2, which is uh, the important part for um, eye color and hair color. He does not have blue eye haplotype 3 and does not have blue eye haplotype 4, but... Uh, all of that taken into account, most likely he does have light color eyes such as green or hazel or blue, you know, um, not brown basically. Uh, he has a Greek shaped nose and blonde hair and uh, he's got straight hair uh, followed by wavy hair. Actually the, the prediction for straight and wavy hair is equal, followed by curly and last place comes kinky hair. His eye shape prediction is that he has actually African or Middle Eastern eye shape, but that, that was done with 9 SNPs, so a 9 SNP ethnicity prediction is uh, not, not the most reliable, you know? Moving on to GZ match, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. A uh, very interesting result, and it's actually different from what you would see in Anatolian Neolithic farmers. He's not scoring any North Atlantic, uh, which Anatolian Neolithic farmers score quite a lot of. Uh, he's also scoring a lot of uh, Red Sea, which is this very southern component that wasn't really um, present in Anatolian Neolithic farmers once again. So clearly there's a little bit more Natufin or some kind of like Levantine admixture here. Uh, with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Yemeni Jewish plus Sardinian, uh, or actually Samaritan plus Sardinian. A mixture of Middle Eastern and Sardinian is what it seems like. Uh, he resembles. This is what he scores with MZL PK11 Modern. Once again, we see this is a little bit different from what you would see in Anatolian Neolithic Farmers. Number one, he's scoring uh, Caucasus here. He's scoring 11% Caucasus, uh, which wasn't present in Anatolian Neolithic Farmers. And he's scoring a lot of basil, 28% basil here, which is a very southern kind of um, Middle Eastern component. And he's actually scoring like a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus British Roman, which is kind of Egyptian. So uh, this British Roman sample resembles Egyptians. So he's a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic and something Egyptian like, basically. That's how you can interpret this result. Uh, this is what he scores with Pond DNA LK10. Interesting, once again, he's scoring a lot of CHG, Caucasus admixture, that was not present in Anatolian Neolithic farmers. Uh, but he is a chalcolithic individual, copper age individual. He um, already has some cocosus admixture, it seems like. And he's getting more or less a mixture of Bedouins plus various southern Europeans here. This is what he scores with Pondian LK12 Ancient. And um, we see once again, we see this cocosus admixture. And we also see this southern Levantine admixture present in this individual. Uh, with him scoring 26% Near East. Once again, Neolithic farmers from Anatolia would not score this much Near East. Uh, for them, that number would be more like 9 or 10%. And they also wouldn't score Caucasus Hunter Gatherer with this calculator. So he's getting modeled as a mixture of Tunisian Jewish plus Sardinian. Uh, he's actually very close to Tunisian Jewish. That's very interesting. Uh, resembles Tunisian Jews quite a lot. Uh, quite a strong resemblance between this individual and Yemenite and Tunisian Jews. And uh, this is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, you see, this is once again different from Anatolian Neolithic farmers. A lot less West European hunter-gatherer affinities. A lot less... Well, in this case, it's not really a WHG. It's more like a basically Northern European genetic drift. Uh, a lot less Northern European genetic drift. And he's closest to Levant Bronze Age. Uh, with the oracle, although it's not particularly close, it's a pretty high distance. Anyway, uh, the point is this guy is not similar to Anatolian Neolithic farmers. He's from Anatolia, but he's a lot more southern, he's a lot more even Caucasus shifted than these Anatolian Neolithic farmers, and he's actually getting more as a mixture of stuff like Russian plus Natufian, or like uh, Bulgarian plus Natufian, basically Eastern European plus Natufian, and that's very interesting. So there is this there's an eastern component present here, right? In this case, this eastern component is Caucasus Hunter Gatherer admixture, but this individual is pretty much like a modern Middle Eastern person, pretty much like that. Anatolian Neolithic farmers are not. Anatolian Neolithic farmers are very Western, uh, they're very Sardinian like, they are not like Middle Eastern people. This person is Middle Eastern in every sense.
Now we are going to look at his results with my trade predictor. Let's start with Nashakot. Uh, with Nashakot, he's predicted to have, it seems like green eyes, definitely not dark brown eyes, but looks like green eyes, uh, dark blonde hair, and light skin, right? So green eyes, dark blonde hair, light skin. Uh, this is the predicted eye color for him. Uh, with Nashakot. Now let's look at Oka 2 Herc 2 eye color prediction. So this takes into account only the genotype in, uh, in the Oka 2 and Herc 2 region. Here it looks like the predicted eye, eye color is blue. And now we're going to look at his polygenic risk scores. We are not going to really... Well, maybe I will show you the ethnic calculator too. So for the polygenic risk scores, he's got um, pretty much below average odds of schizophrenia, uh, nothing was found for type 2 diabetes and pretty high score for Alzheimer's we're gonna see why that is now okay I guess I was doing something here I, I guess um I can show you his ethnic calculator too that would be interesting to see let's go ahead and copy these file uh, copy these numbers for the source wait um it's kind of eh, I'm having some issues having some issues we're gonna go ahead and copy the Oracle here Right, we're copying the Oracle, we're going to put this into source. Uh, let's go ahead and copy the target. We're going to put it into target. And he is closest to... Oh, I, okay. Okay. Uh, I just realized that I already had this file. Uh, I already had processed this file and made it a part of the Oracle. So, obviously, it's going to score closest to itself, followed by BMAC, Natufians, uh, Himera, Mercenaries from the Caucasus. Let's remove uh, this file from uh, the Oracle, actually. Uh, it, it is a good idea to do that. Let's see what it would score if we don't include uh, this in the Oracle. And let's see what's, what's it getting modeled as. It's getting modeled as a mixture of Egyptian pre Ptolemaic mummy, kind of a low quality file, Israelite, Algerian. Uh, Shumlaka is actually Sub Saharan African, uh, but there is also Korean, Uyghur. A very interesting result. What if we uh, reduce it to three populations? Okay, so with three populations, it's getting modeled as a mixture of medieval Afghan. Iranian individual and uh, Sub-Saharan African, Shumlaka, very interesting. What about four populations? Uh, with four populations, it seems to be Egyptian, pre Ptolemaic, Mami, Israelite, South African hunter-gatherer, and Uyghur. Uh, so there seems to be a black, um, there seems to be a little bit of an African black component that my calculator fi uh, finds in this individual. What about this? So. Well, okay, with this cal with this model, there isn't any black. There is just BMAC, Egyptian mummy, Satsurblian, Caucasus hunter gather, Algerian and Caucasian mercenary from Himera. So, uh, but with most of these models, we see a little bit of black admixture with my calculator, which is kind of interesting. I'm not saying this individual is part black because um, obviously, if he's not scoring any African with GED match, um, it's probably a GED match who's in the right. But it, it is kind of um, an interesting dynamic that he's scoring some African with my calculator. So um, he has AA in Komtswa Met variation, meaning Met Met genotype or Warrior genotype. Very interesting stuff. It's a very stereotypically European genotype to have. Uh, warriors have more dopamine, slower dopamine reuptake, more dopamine, less activity of the Compt enzyme. And Compt is the enzyme that breaks down dopamine. So if you have less activity of the Compt enzyme, that means you're going to have more dopamine building up in your system. People with this genotype uh, tend to have advantages in, task, in tasks of attention and motivation, disadvantages when it comes to stress resiliency. And as I've said previously, this is an extremely, extremely European genotype to have. There is another extremely European genotype to have here, uh, which is this. He has two derived no goal learning variants and 0 2 pro pro. Once again, a very stereotypically European genotype. Uh, this individual seems like uh, he has a lot of European genotypes when it comes to mental health. And that's what it looks like to me. Um, he does not have long form 5-HTTLPR. So, okay, so he's got pretty much typical average person short form 5-HTTLPR. Um, slightly above average odds of depression. Uh, he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Nothing is surprising here. Uh, he does not have type 1 diabetes, and for hemochromatosis, he does, he's not a carrier of the C282Y hemochromatosis mutations, does not have the Celtic curse. Um, and this is probably the reason he's got such a high score for Alzheimer's, this genotype right here. Uh, it does increase... Wait, no. No. No, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. It's it's uh, this genotype instead. So because of this genotype right here, he's got increased odds of Alzheimer's. I'm tripping. 
Um, better performing muscles like we sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Uh, no variance for increased pain sensitivity and SCN 9A. Um, that's a that's an interesting. She's less likely to gain weight if taking Zyprexa. Most people are uh, predisposed to higher weight gain from Zyprexa, but that's not the case for him. For him, he's actually less likely to gain weight if taking Zyprexa. Uh, he's not a carrier of albinism type 1B. He does not have Mediterranean fever mutations, but we, uh, Mediterranean fever is actually it, it's actually most common in like Turks, Arabs, Jews, uh, Armenians, people like that. So I wouldn't be too surprised if for some of these he had um, variants for Mediterranean fever. Unfortunately, his all of this stuff is not in his file. It's not a very high quality file, uh, so we don't really know. But I would not be surprised if he had some Mediterranean fever variants. Uh, for the blue eye hepatotype C, does not have blue eye hepatotype 3. I talked about that in my uh, previously. He has blue eye hepatotype 2. He has blue eye hepatotype 1. All right. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, comment your suggestions for next videos. I like when you guys comment. It helps promote my videos in the algorithm. And uh, goodbye.